Simply Betty here. I am a betta fish person or a betta fish person. That's pretty much what I do is fish. It's a vlog, like it's about my fish and my projects and I bring you through all the projects and the breeding projects and it's pretty much just fish. But I do have a little side interest that sometimes pops in on this channel and that would be my geckos. I do think geckos are super cute. I like geckos. I have a multitude of geckos. Cute little crested geckos. I have a big super giant leopard gecko and I have a multitude of tokay geckos. <laughs> Last time I did anything about my tokay geckos was when I got them. That was years ago. Look how cute she is. Getting them was really fun. i had been looking forward to having tokays for so long and I finally got them and they were my precious little angry pets. This one here is a powder blue female. I got her as just a youngin. And then I also got this super handsome male. His name is Bitey, because he's good at that. Because my channel is mostly about fish, I never really gave an update on my tokays because there were, there were my pets. I do get asked a lot to do tokay gecko updates because a lot of people are interested in them for good reason. It takes a really certain kind of person to like tokay geckos and to want them as pets in your home. Like a really specific kind of person. <laughs> Maybe you like geckos who bark really, really loudly in the middle of the night and wake you up. Maybe you like geckos who will stand their ground, whose bite is so powerful that if they latch onto you, you literally can't get them off. This is Boris, and Boris is not as friendly as Linus. He kind of is a little angry, kind of wants me dead. Sounds really fun. So when I first got my tokays, I made a video of getting them and being really excited for them. A lot of people were really wondering why on earth I did that. They have an incredible bite force relative to their size. One of my favorites. I guess the aggressive ones are the prettiest. Little demons full of hate that look so cute. I think you should name them both. I hate humans and if I could rip your fingers off, don't ever touch me again. I have a pair with six eggs living in my hurricane shutters and I'm terrified every time I go outside. <laughs> Their bark keeps me up all night. I'm from the Philippines and they're everywhere. I'm scared of them. I love this comment. No one. 3 a.m. <laughs> Tokays can be so pretty. If only they didn't have the personalities of tiny chainsaws. It's not so much the bite, it's the chewing and not letting go of flesh. In the Philippines, this is what you see on the ceiling at 3 a.m. The lizard god of noise. Why? <laughs> I would say what initially drew me to the Tokay Gecko was its beauty. Look at it. Look at that beautiful light blue body and those red or orange spots. It's just a really fascinatingly beautiful creature. And then you can go deeper. You can learn about the various morphs that Tokay Geckos come in. There are beautiful Tokays that don't have any spots. They just have these solid colored bodies, which I think are beautiful. That's why I have my powder blue female. There are the blue headed greens. There are like different patterns. There's different spots. There's, there's Tokays that have reduced spotting. There are albino Tokays. There are lacoustics. There's melanistics. There's granites. There's all kinds of genetic traits that our people are working on developing, working on solidifying. And I'm not an expert. I only have like a surface level knowledge of Tokay morphs. I feel like morphs for this species are harder to, to work on because they can't be mass produced. Tokays take a long time to become sexually mature. Like my female wasn't at a good safe size until she was like two years old. And when they are ready to breed, they have to be paired. You can't have like one male and 10 females and make tons and tons and tons of baby tokays. They become bonded to each other. It's, it's one male and one female and they become bonded and they protect their eggs together and there's actually parental care involved. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they're not mass produced like a lot of other reptiles, but it's also one of the reasons why I think they're extra cool. Tokays are known for being really aggressive and nasty and murderous and downright mean. They can be absolutely terrifying little beasts when they're scared of you. 
the Tokei doesn't run away when it's scared. It stands its ground. It's gonna open its little nasty mouth. They have really, really powerful jaws for such a small animal. And if you look closely inside their mouth, they have rows of nasty little teeth. You can do a search for Tokei Gecko Bite. Their bites can puncture your skin, they can draw blood, they latch onto you like they're so famous for doing. They're just stuck there. You can't get them off, you just have to wait for them to let go. <laughs> DBCV Exotics was talking about his Tokei Geckos and he got bit and there's like blood everywhere. Ah. Ah. Brave Wilderness has a video where he got bit. Yeah. Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures got bit by a Tokei Gecko. Ow. See? What was I saying about aggression? Clint's Reptiles did a video on Tokei Geckos and he didn't get bit, but you could tell he was like, really towing the line. It's okay. It's okay. That was a good one. When Clint's Reptiles has that much respect for the Tokei Gecko bite, you should listen. I found this video on social media. I don't actually know who it originally belongs to, but it's a Tokay versus like this nasty black snake. And look, the Tokay is not running away. It's not scared. It's lunging at the snake and like attacking this snake and defending itself against the snake. And then I found another random video of a cat like approaching a Tokay out of curiosity, right? And this cat learns its lesson. Kitty cakes, you need to stay away from Tokei geckos. You understand? Good kitty. For all the videos you can find where Tokeis are nasty, devilish little creatures lunging at you and wanting to destroy you, you can also find videos where they seem very handleable. It is not impossible to have a Tokei and to tame it down and actually be able to handle it and pet it. As a general rule of thumb, you probably shouldn't get a Tokei Gecko and expect to play with it, expect to carry it around, expect to pet it like it's a beardy or a leopard gecko. If you want the challenge of gaining an animal's trust and taming it down, then maybe Tokeis are perfect. When it comes to taming them, it's absolutely possible. Look at Reptiliatus. His channel is really fun to watch. I love seeing all of his reptiles and how well he takes care of them. He has Tokei geckos and he has tamed them with just good care and trust over a long period of time. He doesn't try to, to grab or to handle his geckos. It's not really what he does. He's gained his Tokei's trust by food motivation. And you can see like they'll jump on him and then jump back to their cage. I love that. Bitey, my precious, awesome gecko Bitey, did that to me. I trained Bitey to only take his food if he jumped onto my arm. And so I'd have tongs and I'd have like a super worm on it and he would jump out of his enclosure onto my arm. Massive lizard, he like spanned my entire forearm. And I never got a video of it because whenever I try to take my phone out or maybe set my camera up on a tripod, he would see it and he would just not like the camera and refused to jump on me. Bitey was so cool and big and loud, but I, I rehomed him back when all of my moving chaos started. So I do not have Bitey anymore. Um, I liked to have a gecko that wasn't really for handling. It was just to admire, to take care of, and occasionally have them jump onto my hand and jump back. But this channel, for example, Tokek Tokek, it's a South Korean channel that I highly recommend if you like Tokek geckos. And he puts time into taming them down and making them handleable a little differently. His method is to basically desensitize the gecko and maybe let it bite you a couple times and start touching its head and touching around its face, eventually getting to the point where the gecko is just desensitized to you and doesn't view you as a threat and he can hold his geckos. So can you tame them down and handle them and pet them? Absolutely. They're also great for people who are not light sleepers. Uh, don't keep a male in your bedroom, like how I had my, my big male bitey when I first got him. <laughs> that was kind of silly of me. So here's an update on my Tokei geckos. 
So I'm using those 20 gallon tall um, conversions that I made as my tanks so when I moved. My enclosures aren't very pretty right now. Just since moving, I haven't taken that time to set it up and make pretty enclosures and pretty terrariums for my geckos. My giant extra tall exoterra busted in the move. So coming down to like the meat of this Toke gecko update, I'm having a little bit of a problem. My current house is much smaller than my last house and I don't have very much space anymore. I have five gecko enclosures throughout my house. They take up a lot of space and it's just proving to be too many. And I finally just accepted the idea that I need to rehome some of them. And out of all of my geckos, let's face it, my tokays have the least redeeming qualities for my young family. <laughs> Tokay geckos are out in my fish room. They take up a huge space in my fish room that I really need to be devoting towards fish. I also have to devote space to their live food cultures. I keep dubia roaches. And I've been agonizing about this for months. You could just ask my family, hey, has Taylor been agonizing over her bloodthirsty demon geckos? Yes, they will say, yes, she has. But I finally just, I have to do it. I have to rehome my tokays. They are going to be going to somebody whose main passion is tokay geckos. Betta fish are my true love. Tokay geckos are taking up the space where I can do my betta fish. So I know this might seem like a sad way to end a video, but I don't think it should be. I'm having to adapt after my move, and this choice is going to be a good one for me and my channel. I think it's better to let an interest go, even if you like it, to be able to focus better on a main interest, my betta fish. What do you think, guys? Is this sad? Is this bittersweet? Is this good news? You can let me know down below. I have a huge backlog of videos thanks to some computer problems, and there's lots of stuff coming up. Thanks to my patient patrons, my awesome subscribers, and the fun people who I got to meet at Aquashella over the weekend. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.